Our time has started. Hi, everybody. Um, we're here again today at California State University Chico for our technology and learning and teaching. Um, this presentation is sponsored by Kel and Academic Technologies and the uh, uh, TLP here in uh, the basement of Miriam Library where we are today with Lavan Younger, who is here to talk to you about assessment strategies for VISTA. Um, in this session, he's going to talk about the process his department has gone through to assess students using Blackboard VISTA. Um, the presentation is going to include examples of test questions, testing scenarios, how he changed the settings to accommodate all the crazy situations you've been through. And um, he's going to give you some recommendations about what to do with assessments, and he's also going to tell us what his department plans to do in the future. So, Ravan, I'm going to leave it up to you, and have a great presentation. Thank you, Ann. And thanks for having me today. <clears throat> um, I'm going to uh, give a little history of how I got to this point. Uh, something of the rationale that I use to um, develop and apply to my assessments. Uh, give you some examples of test questions and things that I uh, have learned and uh, uh, found that has saved me a considerable amount of time. It worked better for uh, the way that I uh, approach this. Um, I'll show you some databases that I've developed and then other things that I've learned from that and, and then lastly some uh, testing scenarios where, where I am now. Uh, first, as to the history, I, as probably many of you, started with uh, classes of oh, 22, 30 people. Generally 30 was a large size and it, it would take me uh, maybe an hour and a half or two hours to correct exams. Uh, up to a few years ago, now the classes that I have are 120 plus students, and uh, I, I was finding that it was taking me oh 16 plus hours to uh, cor to co go through and correct the exam. So I was looking for other methods to uh, help this. Uh, we of course had the old uh, Scantron printout uh, uh, results, uh, enter them in uh, um, Excel. Uh, you know, kind of summarize them and post things, and uh, that too was taking a lot of time. Well, developing coming up on the other side was WebCT, now Vista, and uh, starting uh, two and a half years ago, we had another intersection that the more than one faculty was working on the same class. So we were looking at how we can begin to uh, standardize more and do more things. Um, so <clears throat> I went to some of the introductory VISTA classes and what types of things could be done with the uh, uh, with VISTA and I identify that's for me. Other things that I was finding that were a, a, a problem was uh, posting results. I will cover some of that at the end of uh, kind of was unplanned uh, results that I had, but it turned out to be very positive. Uh, and uh, something about uh, oh, the exam restrictions and, and modeling things that I uh, wanted to do. What also uh, w attracted me was the fact that I didn't have to use class time or the possibility of not using class time to do uh, exams. Uh, there are some other uh, uh, benefits in that um, if I think Ann said that I'm a professor of construction management, and our efforts are two of my efforts in uh, the senior level construction estimating and, and construction cost management classes. And as much as I can model what you actually have to do in the exam situation, that's what I was seeking. Um, as to the test questions, uh, I, I think it was just uh, um, um, Tell you this that I initially started using a software called Respondus, and I found that that that, that worked and was effective. It uh, wasn't keeping up with my needs, or it didn't operate the way I wanted to operate. And I, I think I would tell you, and I don't have you know example to display here, but I went to I have two monitors, and I have on Word or Excel or another document my questions and things that I develop over here, and I simply copy and paste, and I found that that has, is the most effective and the fastest way for me to do this and to increase the size of my uh, 
uh, question pools, which I'll, I'll show you. And um, okay, now the uh, the other thing that it, that it, that it, uh, I, I appreciated and I tried to develop or I wanted to develop and did uh, was uh, this ability to use uh, the randomness of one of selecting questions and two of uh, randomizing the uh, uh, order of the answers. Um, and there were several steps that I went through there that I, I found now it is uh, it's become very effective and I'm, I'm increasing the sizes of my, uh, uh, of my database. So, all right, I, I wanna look at the uh, questions. Uh, let's see, I've got the slides here, don't I? Uh, and I can change the slide in the background, I think. Yeah, it's just opening up, huh? There. Thank you. Uh, that's me. Uh, how? That, okay. Um, the. Uh, couple of things that I wanted to uh, show you on the uh, assessment that I've, I found. Uh, and and you know, this may be very obvious for most, but the, the 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 questions are in a database, and the key field is the title. And I can tell you, initially, I started making some rather complex titles and found that that really didn't work well for me. I I begin to abbreviate them, and uh, 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 oh, excuse me, I got off on questions in here. All I'm displaying here is on uh, my is, do I, is this whole window showing for me or, oh, I see, I think. Uh, it, it, these are a list of exams on a particular course. It is a cost management course. And as you can see, I've, what I've developed is four different exams. And actually we're seeing some of the uh, progress in this uh, initial setup. Um, I guess I, I could point out that it, uh, a benefit that uh, uh, we found and it developed uh, early on was it says a preparatory exam, and actually that is an assessment exam as the students come into the class. Uh, uh, and, and then I gave uh, four exams through the um, uh, semester. And uh, what we're seeing here is that I gave exam two, and as always, especially if you have uh, more than 100 students, there are several with uh, uh, very valid reasons why they weren't able to be there and take that exam. So once I have um, uh, all of the students who know, I've, I've, I've exceeded the time allowed for the uh, exam, like exam two, then I had to duplicate it and make a makeup exam and make that available to the other students. So it was additional work. Uh, I think I wanted to point out to you here now in the final exam, actually what I did in the final exam was give it on, on six different occasions in one week to, there were four sections. And quite simply, uh, there is a password protected or password security release for the exams. So for the first section of exam, uh, I used one password, just simply a, a string of numbers, and changed it at the end of that exam period, just simply change one number, and we have a new password, used a, a separate one in the second section, and et cetera, moved, moved on. Uh, now, uh, going to, I'm now just going to the database, the DISTA uh, uh, question database, and uh, we see here, uh, what I've got is a slide. Uh, uh, what we can't see is I have something like uh, 38 or 40 different categories. And you see here under the, uh, the uh, database that there are 26 questions in this uh, individual pool. And you'll notice now that I've identified that as FNL Spring 09. That was what I used for the final. What I'm going to show you a bit later is that what, I've, what I have done is make these uh, pools of questions uh, 
categorized by topic and then used uh, selected. And uh, I think, well, I might as well go to it here. I think I have that in this next slide um, that we see here is a topic. And there you see the uh, questions. And also shown over on the right side is uh, what exams or how I've used those questions uh, prior to this. Um, there's, uh, I have identified that particular, this, these particular questions as uh, 75 to 100% of the students in the class answered that question correctly. And what I am doing now is beginning to uh, accumulate difficult as compared to easy questions. Um, and I think I, my next slide here uh, gives yeah, an example of, here's my question set. And this is an aside. I'm, I'm hoping in the next uh, version of VISTA, uh, this is corrected in that, or, or no, and made a, a, a little bit better attribute. Uh, they come up in your exam rather than as a category, as a question set. And this actually is a, a category, uh, uh, in, in, and it's to make it up in the in the exam. They've chosen to call it a question set. Now, what you can see here is that I have 48 questions um, in this particular category, and I am just randomly selecting 20 of them. My objective here was so uh, that this desire to have the exams done outside of the uh, class was um, uh, my, my criteria, my conditions on taking the exam is, that, as we say, it's for open world, but not consulting. So we expect the student to be uh, working on this themselves. And uh, my results and my data shows that for the most part, that, that's true. I did, I, I'm unable to correlate the students' results on the, uh, this, no, the students' performances on the exams with other work that I do in class, you know, under supervision, uh, and they seem to correlate very well. Um, uh, okay, so uh, the, the the student is given uh, this random selection of uh, the questions in each question set, and I may have oh, four or five different question sets in a given exam. Uh, after the exam is complete, or I shouldn't say I don't necessarily have to wait until after it's complete, I can start analyzing them before, but after the exam is complete, uh, this will give us uh, a report. And what, what we see on this slide is on the, on the left side, of outside of the left, left border, is the student's name and uh, other identification for the student. So I'm just showing you what we, what we see there as the students are completing the exam of uh, what their score is and uh, uh, when they took it and how much time they took for it. Uh, I always found that this was kind of a, a juggling game as to just how how do we track how much time the students take as opposed to the slow ones as to the fast ones, and uh, uh, I am, but I'm, I'm pleased at, uh, and surprised to learn that uh, yeah, uh, that uh, while I get some complaints, and you know, with a, again, with a, uh, 100 students in the class, you only have to have a few percent complaining, and you think, boy, I'm really being too tough on this, and when in fact I look at the results of the time that uh, while I'll, I'll, by rule of thumb, I'll leave about a minute per question. And in fact, their averages are running about 20 seconds or 18 seconds. And as you, as you, as you kind of read the questions yourself, you find that if they know it, they can definitely answer it within a minute. If they don't know it, and uh, we can look at the, uh, uh, at the assessment, we can look at how much time they actually spend on each question and we can see if they're spending six or seven minutes on a question. Obviously, they don't know it. And what was more important to me is that they don't know how to find it either. So uh, I, I, uh, it builds a confidence in me that uh, we were really assessing the student. And this was not a kind of haphazard, random thing. 
Uh, so out of this, uh, this report is for what the individual students did when they took it. Of course, I can correlate the time with the time in the classroom or, uh, and also identify. I can say that uh, many of these reports, are, maybe I should say now, that most of them I exported them to Excel so then I could sort them. And interestingly enough, then you can see the students that took it at the same time. Um, and then further check, should you want. Okay. The student response report is something that I used uh, for, here is, uh, here is the export, the first, uh, let's see, the, 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 the raw data for, from the student's response on individual questions uh, in, in Excel. Several reasons that I export it to Excel. One, it's very much faster and you can put it in a much clearer format, and I can do uh, some pretty quick analyses of it. Uh, here we're seeing what the student responded, and you can see the randomness of it. Uh, those four students there did not get this question. The next two did, et cetera. Uh, I then take that and do a little... Uh, 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 and enhance it, increase the column headings, uh, 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 to go to the wrap the text in it, and I now can uh, 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 very easy to analyze this. In addition, which I don't think I made a, uh, no, I didn't make a slide of. In addition, I will if, if there is a particular question that uh, I may have had a, and this may come as a surprise, but from time to time I do make a mistake and I'll have the wrong answer marked. Well, I can go make the correction for all of the students that got that question and mark the wrong one, and it, and it was very quickly by sorting these now, and I, then I put them in a group, and there I've got the four, five, six students that took this question, and I can go directly back in and, and, and fix. And that, that, uh, that, that's, that saves avalanches of complaints about it. Um, Okay, the next is a question report, which is was more of my objective. Uh, the finding the rather rapid and easy way that I could um, correct the, uh, the, uh, any of the errors on the questions and then get the uh, uh, appropriate uh, total score for the students, uh, that, was, uh, um, that was kind of a bonus. But here are my, the question titles, which again, that's how uh, they're kept and sorted and handled in the database. And here are the answers. Again, this is the first download from um, Vista and put in uh, Excel. So my next, uh, nope, that is not it. Uh, a, what I do here now, of course, is when it sees this is percent answered, percent answered, when it's looking for them, perhaps I don't have it on here. Uh, and somehow. That may be it. It is. Now all I've done is taken that Excel uh, worksheet and enhanced it, increased the, uh, the uh, column heading, um, and have clearly uh, uh, what the, the three evaluations that I have here. That is the percent uh, correctly answering out of the whole group in this question, SV6, 60% answered it correctly. Now, when I start looking at the difficulty, uh, obviously there I, I know 60% answered it correctly, that's relatively easy, but uh, of the upper 25% uh, is, was the sort that I made here, of the upper 25%, uh, none of them answered it quite correctly. And of the lower, uh, the lower 25%, two thirds did. And, and so I'm that was curious. So I go look at the question to see what is going on there. What I, uh, 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 specifically what I did in this slide was I sorted the answers of the upper 25% and see how many of there got zero uh, or 20% and uh, go on down 50% of it correct. And I'm identifying the, the most difficult questions. 
and uh, I can go now, and I will to, and I did to this group of questions, and to see if there is something unclear about the question, there's something about the reference, something is wrong with it. Uh, and what I develop with these other questions is from easy to difficult to very difficult questions, um, which gets me to the slide that I had uh, up ahead here. And see, when I started seeing that kind of data, uh, then I got, um, maybe it was a little uh, uh, clever, maybe it was uh, uh, just a little diabolical. Uh, I made, this is a final exam, and uh, the students were well on notice from the beginning of the course that to pass the course, they had to get 70% in the final exam. So my concern is that, as I say, this was a senior level course. I don't, uh, I really think that somebody has to put forth an effort to flunk the class. Uh, but I don't want it to be anything that uh, I, I perhaps have done wrong or overlooked. So what I've, uh, I've, I've done here is I've taken the, the, I've made this exam into four sections. And I have 75%, that is three quarters of the exam, is uh, the degree of difficulty is easy. If you know the material, you should do well. And I picked court, the exam, the uh, uh, answers that at least 75% got correct. Uh, so uh, I, I, that portion I gave 90 points, or it comes out to 70% of the total. The next was uh, the degree of difficulty was 50 to 75% uh, got it correct, uh, et cetera, down to the more difficult ones. So uh, the results should give me, and, and in fact did, uh, that uh, everyone passed the exam with 70, 72%. Those students that put forth the effort that did get up in the A range, and I had a very nice distribution. And I, 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 I thought, you know, for one of the first times that, aha, then it's comfortable. Now I'm not uh, having to deal with gee, should I or shouldn't I, or do I, you know, give them a 15 extra points just to get them the heck out of here? Uh, okay. <laughs> now, how did I get to this point to show you some of the things that I uh, uh, developed and what I started finding worked for me? Uh, here, again, is that the, the questions, and they, I, I'm sorting them into groups. Now what I wanted to do, you see, what, what of course happens when we sort that then our, our questions all get mixed up. And uh, it didn't take me very long to figure out if I can go to SB15, I have to go over to the category and go down to SB15, that's the one that I want in there, and that's gonna take me, I don't like that, that's gonna take me too long. So the next step that I did was, uh, by that weighting, 75%, that was a green, I just, I just simply colored. I sorted it, colored everything, and then I, we sorted it by in order of question number. Oh, and the red, of course, is the hot ones, the tough ones. And I think that I, well, and you can see in the, the middle zone was a light green. And then when I resorted it in the question set order, then everything was color coded. And then I could go through my categories and quickly select the questions. And, uh, uh, and actually, what I did was select the questions, and I and I and I effectively renamed the question as the final question, so I didn't have to change anything in my question pool. Uh, great instead of putting. Um, and I, and I'll show you how I did that. Now, the, the, the one of the things I wanted to just to point out to you is that <clears throat> with my students. Something that uh, uh, seemed, uh, and it may be just me, just but it always annoyed me as asking, well, how am I doing in the class? And I said, well, that's simply if you, and, and I posted the um, scores or the average, and I posted the scores, I said, if, if you're above the average, you're doing okay. If you're below the average, you should be doing a little more work. That did not seem to you know, handle or satisfy them. Uh, even though I, 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 I took my scores off of the, um, you know, whatever, however I was accumulating, post these, but, you know, put them on the bulletin board, uh, all of those things, they seem to just effectively ignore and not look at them, really not know what their status was. Uh, what I like in, in the, 
And yet another thing that I like in VISTA is this report, that the student can get uh, the average for the class, what the distribution is, and, of course, what their score is, and they see they, they can't avoid it. They see it. They have it here. They can see where they are. And uh, this is a histogram of for the final exam, and you can see that there uh, were a couple that were right at uh, 70 or a point or two below 70, uh, but it's, it's, it's uh, uh, very simple, very plain, and two things. So you, you run this uh, uh, um, statistical report for uh, the individual exam, and then all I have to do is make a, a summary grade column that I kind of keep a running summary on, and they get a, you know, a status, current status uh, output in it. Uh, this is virtually, well, not virtually. It has stopped all of my questions. I do not get any questions anymore about what's my grade, what's my status in the class. Uh, and that, that, that alone has saved me not just the time but the aggravation. Uh, 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 okay, so... Um, let's take a look at the uh, uh, VISTA course. Can I just click it on here? Oh, I got it. Oh, oh there. The share. Mm -hmm. All right. Just click over on your... Oh, uh, on the top there. Oh, yeah. So uh, here in um, this, you know, I found this was very helpful. It wasn't very, uh, not, they're, they're very difficult to do. And uh, just more recently, this semester from our uh, TLP program, they sent out a website with these uh, uh, very nice icons which I found, uh, you know, even with the, the construction types, uh, they're great that uh, uh, we don't have to read it. We can t tell at a glance what's there, too, uh, is, is obviously the intention. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is go, yeah, I'm going to go to the assessment, and I will uh, show you, um, let's go to the question database, I think, uh, and uh, uh, I'll, I'll show you if I, uh, for instance, take a, uh, excuse me, look at a uh, uh, question. Uh, I don't do that. Yeah. Pardon? A little plus sign to the left. Yeah, to drop them down. Yeah, thanks. So what I can do if this is a question that I selected, I'm going to edit that question and, uh, well, Let's, let's take a quick jump back over here. Notice I've set up a mock final. That's a new final that I'm making. And uh, now if it's the plus sign, I knew that. Uh, the, I'm going to edit this question. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it for, um, uh, let's put uh, my, the new final that I'm making. So all I've done is change the title. I don't have to change anything else in my question except go down here to the options, and uh, here I, I have made up that category mock final already, and I just need to select it. What is it at the top? Yeah. yeah, that's right, because I put the z double zero on it. Yeah, I, I, I was pretty, but sometimes I forget how clever I was earlier. <laughs> so I select the uh, uh, existing category, save this as new, now I have it. I still have my own old question that <clears throat> this question that I used in, oh, it says exam four, but that, let's take it as exam two is where it is. I don't have to touch it again. And now I've got a, uh, a new uh, final question. Um, that, it, it was that. It was quick. And I, uh, what I'm finding now, as you notice, in this uh, final, there are a pool of 26 questions. But let's go down here to some of the other categories. Uh, let's pull them all up. It, it, it maybe gets a little more obvious about, yeah, uh, as I said, this was cost management and this is accounting code design. There's just two questions in there about that and that, that, that 
go into that, but accounting code or CSIs, construction specifications, institute codes, there are 17 questions in that pool. Now, happens that I'm doing this, this as you see, this uh, 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 class is from last spring. It happens as one of the first times I'm doing the same class in the following semester. And what I do now uh, uh, is I add to the pool. And I'm looking at adding it a couple of different ways. Of course, some of my questions, and then ask the students for it. What would be a good question here? And uh, 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 I want at some point to have a big pool of questions. And the point is that's what we want the students to know. And I'm going to publish or make those aware. You know this stuff. You know what's in the course. Um, I think that uh, well. Uh, you know, some of what I, uh, I do is kind of a, it's a good overview of what I do now, and I'm virtually learning every every week, every time I do, every time I do an exam, there are more things that I learn and can apply, and uh, uh, give me where do I want, where I want to go with assessments. Um, now, the in, it, uh, Ann said something about in within the department. Yes, uh, in the, within the Department of Construction Management, and I, I don't know if you know, at the Chico State here, that's about that's over 700 majors. Uh, we're making more and more transitions to this, and I, I don't mean to say that it's uh, you know it's painless. It does take some does take some time in learning it. Uh, that, although that was relatively easy, it's just learning the steps. Uh, the more I do it, the easier it is, and typically I will take just a oh, maybe an hour in the morning of the exam to go through uh, it and, and uh, uh, change a few things, refine it. Uh, it takes very little time. Now that I have the pools made, very easy to do. Um, when I exam tomorrow, I'll have that uh, done and, and in depth. Uh, I think the other thing I would advise is, and what I found worked very well, and the part that didn't work so well, at least for me, if I go through the read the questions and edit them, uh, I'm, I'm, I know what I'm asking, and I don't always see the errors in it. So what I've gone to is I will have uh, a student or two from the last semester as a student assistant, or the better student, the one that's obviously going to do very well in the class, and, very, and, and we have, I'm sure it's all of you have those types of students, I have them do a pilot test, and then give me feedback about what what was clear, what was not clear, and uh, uh, the interesting thing on that, uh, uh, the, the one more recently I did, is uh, we got comments, something, oh, it's very, it's a great test, it really covers it all. Some of the people in this uh, class will be whining like heck, but don't pay any attention to it, it's good. <laughs> uh, that's all I have, let's, you got any que questions? Yeah, one of the interesting things that I worked on with you was the final exam last year. Mm -hmm. um, so I know about this, but I think it might be interesting for others to hear why you chose to password protect and how we finally solved it and why did we even password protect to begin with? Uh, okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, that's, that is a good question. And because and this does, and this, I didn't, I must assure you, will happen. Uh, 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 this, uh, I'm going to go to the final exam and the edit properties, and I'll show you just how easy that password is to do. Well, as I said earlier, and I and I have done some research from uh, other institutions that have, uh, 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 were trying to track, is the problem is, and the thing we're all concerned about, gee, if I get the exam and I put it out there, how do I know somebody isn't, you know, somebody else isn't helping them and taking it? Well, <clears throat> As one of our, uh, uh, one of our uh, faculty members pointed out to me when I said, you know, I'm tracking this, and as far as I can see, it's, it's not, that, that is not occurring. And because you, as you know that it's only like one out of six or one out of seven, depending on the pool of questions, that get the same exam. And they may not even get, you know, they won't be in the same order. I mean, it's just discouraging as hell, heck. But the fact is that somebody could stand over the shoulder, and answer all the questions for them. My, my, my theory was that they eventually get tired of doing that. But uh, as this, and this, this member was an attorney. And he said, how can you prove they're not doing it? And I said, no, fact is, I can't. So I, I went and uh, ground my teeth about that a little while. And then I said, okay, 
what I can do is I can make uh, take a part, and as it, as it turns out, these classes these have a lab class. I can take a part of the class, and then I can give, I have four of these labs a week. I can give those two-hour sessions. You can come anytime, any day, and it would have you know, adequate uh, computers in the lab, and then happen to have another one, a lab available, too, to take the exam. But you have to take it under supervision. So what uh, I conferred with, with Ann about it, and if you notice under the, uh, under the uh, assessment, uh, the editing, the assessment properties, making the question up, down here there are the security properties, and there is the password. And it, you can see it is really a very, I mean, CIA would probably go for this, but it's simply well, my initials and a series of numbers. Uh, and what I would do is in the first class I'd put on the board is the password. Uh, at the end of the class, I simply change the password. Um, now, that, that little password won't work, and then I give this one at the next class. Uh, I could use the same exam. I got them all summarized on, uh, you know, for the same grade column. It was very, was, uh, very slick, worked very, very well. And uh, I thought, ah, now I can tell you what, what uh, I'm going to do is I will do, do both. That is, I will have it a, uh, as I did initially, say the exam is available from uh, uh, 1 a.m. or we like to use military time, 0100 Monday morning through 2400 Wednesday. You can take it any time in that time span uh, for some of the exams and then have a, uh, a check or a base exam, maybe one or two of them, so I can compare the two and see if they're radically different results. Uh, and, and uh, uh, well, I, I can see that. I can you know, find that. And uh, uh, I can I think that will work and kind of satisfy both uh, my attorney friend and, and, and myself. Um, any other questions? Well, thank you. I'm trying to think of a good one. You just pretty much covered it. Uh, well, thank you. There, there, there is. There is, as I say, there is a lot, and each time you go through it, you think uh, it's kind of another, aha, well, I could do that, and that, that would be beneficial. I think the other thing that, oh, uh, I didn't point out how easy it was, uh, and I'm, I won't grab, uh, as I say, we, we, we do uh, accounting and things like that, and I can put images in there that enhance my question, uh, and, and, and you know, is make it so much thorough. So many things that it, it could not do in a uh, you know classroom, pass things out setting. Uh, now it, it really it, it really challenges them to know the subject and know where to find the information. Uh, and it's been my experience, many years working in the industry. That's what the whole challenge is. It's an enormous database out there. You need to know how to find the information. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, just to summarize, a couple of things that I found important that others may want to use is to um, analyze the questions. Use the, the tracking features in this to the statistic features yeah. and mm -hmm. then take them out. Not only randomize the questions in a set, but randomize the answers in the question mm -hmm. and then create some experiences for students to do face-to-face -face in a lab where they're password protected, and create other experiences that they can do on their own. Did I do that? You, Did I yeah. summarize well? Very well. Very well. Thank you. Um, this is our last in our series for the fall semester here at uh, Cal State Chico, and I think you ended it with a, a nice note, and I appreciate you coming in today. Um, we'll have more presentations in this spring, and we'll be advertising them on the TLP website. Uh, it's uh, www.csuchico edu slash TLP, and um, we might actually have you back at some time, Ovan. I'll have more things developed. I think you will. <laughs> and thanks for coming today, everybody. Did you turn that on?